Hello, welcome to No Defense Defense Space. My name is William Hemsworth. Thank you for joining me for this week's program. We haven't spent a lot of time talking about marriage here on the program, but that's why I'm really excited to have my guests on today. Uh, Mary Rose and Ryan Verrett are the founders of Witness to Love and the authors of Witness to Love, How to Help the Next Generation Build Marriages that Survive and Thrive. And together, Ryan and Mary Rose speak on issues regarding evangelization, marriage, NFP, miscarriage, and medical ethics. Uh, they're frequent guests on Catholic Radio, and they reside in Cajun country uh, with their five children. And the passion is teaching couples to share their marriage with others. Guys, thanks for coming on the program today. Appreciate it. It's good to be here. Well, pleasure is all mine. Um, again, they're from Cajun country, Louisiana. We're in Tucson. It's always great to have guests outside of Tucson on the program. So uh, how long has Witness to Love been around, and what was kind of the genesis of it starting? Yeah, so the and it's it's just me right now because Mary Rose is with her five little little ones. Oh, sure, sure. So, um, yeah, the, gen the genesis started around nine years ago. We uh, Mary Rose and I were the uh, typical, not typical. We were, we were voluntold <laughs> by <our> advisees <laughs> to start um, presenting the uh, at the, the marriage prep conferences for the diocese. So three or four times a year, we would be the kind of lead couple. Uh, in a room of about 80 other couples um, who engaged, you know, really warm room. Food was usually pretty good. And then, um, but, you know, in the talk, you know, speakers, we would try to do the best we could. Um, you know, marriage prep is a, is a really a weird thing. <laughs> it's such a gift to the, the church. And if, you, if you take a deep dive into uh, the church um, wants to sort of, put forward about marriage prep, you see that particularly with St. John Paul II envisioned in Vision and Familiaris Concerto, uh, you know, marriage prep is, is uh, in many places, uh, not to pick on anybody, but we were definitely the facilitators of some failure. And the reason why is just because so many engaged couples uh, are so disconnected from the life of the church, they're disconnected from the life of the church, they're disconnected from Christ and the way, you know, God's vision for their marriage and their family. Um, so when we were at the diocese, uh, we, we were getting ready to have our second child, and um, we got to, we went at the, became started at the parish level. Uh, one night our priest showed up, our pastor showed up. He said, oh, I heard Mary Rose, she left the diocese. She was working part-time doing marriage prep. Let's see, he said, um, he, said I, 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 he showed up with a bottle of wine, and uh, he said, I need to talk to you guys. Uh, he said, Mary, I'd like for you and Ryan to take over marriage prep in the parish. He said, he said, I have to be honest with you. He said, I'd rather do uh, 20 funerals before I do a wedding. And we're like, Father, what are you talking uh, about? You're like, you're like the wedding priest. You know, every diocese has like two or three priests to do all the weddings. He said, no, I'm so burnt out. He said, you know, he said, you know, because with a, with a funeral, I know for a fact that the person, I won't see them again. He said, with a wedding, he said, call me a sucker. But every time I do a wedding I, in this marriage prep, I put all my heart into this couple, teaching them NFP, teaching the, and going to adoration and having them come to Mass. And he said, you know, I think I'm going to see them after the wedding day. And he said, they never show up. You know, so we, we were we were shocked and we realized, OK, let's let's we prayed about it. So let's let's take this on. We got to the parish. And realized uh, immediately that many of the couples who had gone to the Dossus and conferences who were from that particular parish never went to Mass after the wedding day. Um, yeah, it was a, it's, you know, so John Paul II has this, had this, this great quote in Familiaris Consortio, his document on the family, paragraph 60. He said that, he said that marriage prep, in addition to being sort of intellectual, medical formation, spiritual, and pastoral formation, he said should should increase in a couple's heart a desire to be a part of the ecclesial community. So basically, saying uh, if, if if marriage prep is not getting a couple a new married couple to mass, it's a failure. So the the attendance uh, the U.S. attendance of uh, newly married couples uh, attending mass after the wedding day is around ten percent. Um, the the divorce rate among couples in the United States, Catholic couples in the United States within the first five years is 23%. So after, after five years of marriage, 23% of our Catholic couples are divorced. And the national average, you know, just everybody is 25%. So if you've been involved in marriage prep, marriage formation, and you know how, how generous these people are and volunteers, that we've had only a 2% difference in the, uh, where the, it, it shows you that we needed, this was a very come Holy Spirit moment. 
And so nine years ago, we really took that to prayer and an opportunity to go to adoration. And God really put in our hearts this something, this, this, this sense that engaged couples and newly married couples don't trust us. They don't trust the church. They don't trust clergy. Um, and we also realized, you know, not everybody can just, every, not every Catholic is going to be like us. We're, you know, the Washington Times called us, there's this 2% of couples that use NFP and that follow the church's teaching. But, you know, and we have friends who are priests and we go to, we like church things, but we know that the church is, is for more, you know, we need, we need people. And so we, the beginning of kind of witness to love was a refocusing on what, on a very key aspect. And it was the jumping into how do we first um, create an atmosphere of trust. And that's when I think we discover witness to love, which in, in its essence is a catechumenate approach to marriage formation, an early church model. Oh, great. That's great. So what, a, with this whole pandemic thing, what what have you seen in regards to marriage? What other? Yeah, yeah, really interesting. You know, at the heart of Witness to Love is using relationships to be a platform for catechesis. And so very essential to trust. But uh, the, the data that's coming out of, out of China already, and I know numbers out of China are not always trustworthy, but the data that we see is that there has been a rapid rise and increase in uh, couples filing for divorce. And so if, um, you know, if, uh, understanding human nature, we, that could be previews of coming attractions for the rest of the world. And I think, I think that's, it's interesting to, to, to see that. I think the, clearly this COVID-19 experience has been, I, I would say, is a, is a relationship accelerator. You know, I would say marriage gives, gives a man or a woman so many opportunities to, to grow and to become uh, generous and kind, all those things that St. Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Uh, but usually we do that over a long period of time. But when you have when you have basically two or three months to pack in years worth of human formation, sometimes it, uh, it can produce some anxiety and stress. And so I think oh, that's definitely. what we're picking up on is that this has been a really uh, a challenge, uh, for, particularly for those couples who are not used to spending a lot of time together with their kids in their house. Uh, and cooking meals and things like that. Right. That's something my wife and I were talking about just about a week ago. But really, really, I'm really not minding all this time at home, spending each other and teaching the kids how to cook and do all these other things. But there's other people that are just going stir crazy. So I can't imagine. I know we're feeling it, but I know there's other people that are just feeling it a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of us thrive and are grateful for that opportunity. But, you know, we're humans too and realize that, that you know, that this is, this, this provides some extra opportunities for generosity. <laughs> Exactly. And one of the things you've done, it's speaking of generosity, is um, start the Be, Your, the Be Light uh, virtual date night series. So why did you decide to do that? Yeah, uh, as I said earlier, Witness to Love is a catechumenate approach to marriage formation. And in, in the past two years, we've been um, praying and discerning about and creating an opportunity for what is, what is going to be known as the mystagogy of the sacrament of matrimony. So Witness to Love is very much an RCIA experience of marriage prep, where it's meant to be evangelical and and bringing bringing new new uh, Christians into the life of the church, um, but the the Be Light Date Night program is uh, is is a kind of a small dose of that marriage mystagogia. So the marriage mystagogia is based upon five five parts, and it's a five year program. I, I referenced that divorce rate of twenty three percent divorce in the first five years, and so we created this creating this this opportunity for formation where the first year you you're basically be, have a, developing a sense of belonging. The second year is um, is be believing, kind of this learning about the church's teaching. The third year is becoming, so conversion. Fourth year is beatitudes, so going into Matthew five through seven, sort of the Magna Carta of Christianity for couples. And then the fifth one is be light. And so Pope Francis um, said that the church is in great need uh, of, of, of what he calls as evangelizing couples. And so years ago, we heard a priest say that our homes should, particularly now with so many churches closing, Catholic schools, schools closing, just the, the Catholic footprint in the United States just getting smaller. He said, he said, our homes and our families need to be missionary outposts of the local parish, we need to be an opportunity to really bring light um, uh, into a culture where, you know, Christ is not seen as much. 
And so the Be Light Date Night, we, we thought, we said, well, hopefully we'd have a couple hundred couples participate in this. And it, it was virtual. It was, it, was, it was hosting five awesome marriage champions, five diocesan directors from around the nation and their spouses and kind of doing a series. And they, couples would watch the videos from their home and then they would connect in a video conference uh, in the, with their local parish leaders. And so we thought we'd have a couple hundred. We ended up having uh, almost 1,800 couples now from mostly the U.S., but also nine other nations uh, participate to participate in this kind of free offering. There's no cost uh, to, to do that. And um, it was something that I think it just spoke to where a lot of couples were that they wanted to connect with others. And, and really, when you do that, just to kind of um, to increase uh, light, you know, during a time where a lot of people are feeling disconnected. Is that why you think the response was so strong? Just that sense of belonging. Yeah, I think you know. I think uh, I think it's it's obvious that uh, we human beings were designed for relationships. Uh, our culture is, uh, you know, as as things divide between where faith is going and the culture going, you know, cu- our culture today just is isolating and and uh, produces more kind of you know individualism. Um, and in, kind of independence in a, in, a, in a negative kind of connotation. And I think uh, families were, you know, couples were feeling, you know, we can't be alone. And I think also a lot of them were like, you know, you know our kids and what kind of example are we leading? And I think they, you know, marriage enrichment is one of the most challenging things to provide in the church today. It's really hard to get your normal, good, everyday couples doing the best they can to come to do something extra, and particularly when they have little ones around the house or and need more time. There's like never enough time to give to the kids. But I think I think couples had some opportunities to listen in and to be a part of something that they know would enrich this experience. And we also we also uh, communicated, as I was sharing with you listeners, is that as Saint Augustine would say, you know, don't. Don't let an opportunity to do something um, to serve Christ pass you by. Uh, this, hopefully, this is the, a once in a lifetime moment uh, in our in our in our life. Uh, and and but in marriage, we are you know we're, we're ministering to to each other sacramentally, you know, to, to serving Christ, uh, you know, through our spouse and our family. And if we let's not miss an opportunity to reflect. Uh, deeply on on what's what this has meant for us and the gift that has been you know because as I heard a priest say the other day um, the crucifixion was not a beautiful thing obviously and the sacrifice but you know the cross for many people today all over the world has been for for centuries is seen as a sign of hope mm-hmm. and so even though this has been difficult for a lot of people let's use this, let's use this as a reference point for us to become more of who God is calling us to be and not less. And so this date night kind of came out of that need to respond to where couples are today. Oh, great. So who's the, who's the target audience for the date night series? You know, anybody we've had, we've had really young couples like millennial couples who told us they, they lost their job and they're at home. And the only reason why they did this was free and they, and they loved it. And we had like much older couples from like the retirement communities around the U.S. Uh, it, it just it just really varied. We had some small you know groups and kind of doing in, in, at the parish level, but most of the people who contact us were at a parish level or in a group, and they went on our website, which is witness to love.org, witness love.org, and you go in there, and there's a there's a, a whole page that that's for parish leaders. That shows them how to organize this, and so having someone in a community um, sort of take up and, and do this would be the best because it would give them an opportunity to connect with people uh, in, a, in a way that doesn't compromise, you know, any social distancing or kind of space, you know, that people would feel comfortable with today. Right. So, wh- what can what can the couples expect from the Be the Light uh, date night series? Yes. So each 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 uh, night, so it's five nights. Each night is around a 15, you know, 15 to 17 minute video um, with a, a couple uh, going through those five stages that I said from from belonging to be light. And, uh, and they're, they're given a sort of a personal reflection on that. And then there's some reflection questions. There's usually three or four reflection questions at the end of the video that the, the married couple would discuss. And Engage can do this as well. Um, but a marriage couple, you know, they, they would discuss this. 
And ideally, you would you would you could do that within your, your own spouse, or you could do it with a few other spouses and just discuss those different points and those questions. Okay. Well, where can couples access access the series? Yeah, I'm just go to our website, which is witness to love dot org uh, back uh, slash be light. So, and it's, it should be it's right on our homepage right now, so they can just access it for witness to love dot org slash be light. Great. Well, Ryan, I thank you for joining us on the program today and get everyone check out the series. Like Ryan said, it's free. It's like the best price ever. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Check it out. Um, no doubt you'll be blessed. Um, Ryan, I thank you so much for joining me on the program today. Thank you. Appreciate it. Right, thank you.